Hi there, Bobcat Nation. My name is Giovanni Rosello, and welcome to Bobcat Sports Network. Before we get into the 2019-2020 Bobcat Awards, we want to share you a nice special video from President Armstrong and the Athletic Director, Laura Corley Todd. Welcome, everyone, to the STU Virtual Athletic Award Ceremony, or as we like to call, Virtual Studs Ceremony. So, big shout out to all you student athletes. What a wonderful year. Despite all the craziness that has happened, we as an institution cannot be more proud of your efforts and what you've done this past academic year. And again, to my winter athletes that couldn't end some of the playoff seasons, but especially to our spring athletes who were, to be honest, robbed of their spring season. We hope that you're gonna come back. We hope that you understand that we are so sorry for what happened. And we're going to do all that we can to make sure that you end this year with a very positive experience, a positive feeling. So thank you to uh, our athletic director, Laura Courtney Todd, and all our SIDs and coaches and everyone to provide this opportunity for you tonight. So uh, you've got to try to find the positives in the pandemic. And I've been so proud of watching you, our students, uh, learn virtually and get involved and uh, give of your time. It's just been great to see. It's very inspiring for myself as a president and for our administration and our trustees. Uh, but you know, you try to find opportunities in this pandemic. And one of the things is I was able to catch up on my reading. So a very good book on Coach Wooden. Uh, I got to learn more about St. John Henry Newman, Passion for Truth. And uh, this is about small college imperative, how we overcome uh, the crisis in higher education. And right now I'm reading Why Nations Fail very appropriate at this time with all the things that we're dealing with. But I bring these up because, number one, you want to stay sharp and you want to keep on learning as we're going through this and take that opportunity to do that. But I was thinking about the Coach Wooden book, which was an excellent book, and uh, there is, he was very much criticized because they had so much success, so many years of winning the championship, that people kind of, you know, they became the, the evil empire because they were winning so much. And, and, and Coach Wooden took a lot of criticism. And then some of his own players who didn't get to play because they were so loaded with talent, uh, you know, were very tough on him. But then as they, and my point with this and bringing this up now is as they got older, as they got older, they realized the lessons he taught them were the key lessons that they used to be successful in life, which in the end is more important, with their families, with their faith, with their careers. And so all I would say to you is make sure you thank your coaches Yes, they were tough on you. Yes, they demanded a lot of you, but it will make you a better person in the future. And I'm so glad that our coaches and our athletic administration is taking this opportunity to feed you tonight because you deserve it. You give us great joy and you represent our university so well. So to all the studs out there, God bless you and go Bobcats. Hello Bobcats. So excited to have you all engaged in our first virtual athletic award ceremony. This year has been a year of firsts and we rally behind all of them. As we come together to celebrate, let's remember we are stronger together. I'd like to do a special shout out to John Merch and the Bobcat Sports Network for putting this together. You guys rock. Coach Selick, Dr. Bell, Jameson, and Tate, thank you for everything you've done for the total program to make sure that we finish this semester strong. To our athletic trainers and our coaches for the endless text messages phone calls and Zoom meetings. We appreciate you monitoring our well-being. And a special, special thanks to our faculty for quickly going online to do distance learning to make sure we finish the semester. I'd really appreciate it if you all would use the hashtag, the virtual studs, as we continue the show tonight on social media. And like always, God bless and go Bobcats. Hey there, you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to the 2019-2020 Bobcat Awards. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure you follow along on the STU Athletics Twitter accounts using the hashtag the virtual studs. The 2019-2020 athletic year was quite the historic one for St. Thomas University as a football team introduced Bobcat 1 in their inaugural season. The men's and women's swimming and diving was introduced in October alongside with the wrestling team, which expanded the growth of the, SDU, of the STU sports here at the university. Not only that, but Susanna Gutierrez, Andrea Peterson, and Tommy Cardenas represented cross country as they went all the way to the NAIA National Championship 
in Vancouver. To add into that, the men's soccer team also achieved their highest ranking in programming history. And finally, but not least, the men's basketball team reached the Sun Conference Championship for the first time since 2008. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. There were so many more great moments that went on here at the university these past two years. And we're going to take you now first with a quick recap of fall, starting with volleyball. St. Thomas was led by NAIA and AVCA All-American Honorable Mention Tyron Chenault, who also was recognized as a member of the Sun Conference first team. Ariana Bollinger also earned Sun Conference honors for the second consecutive season, taking home second team honors. The Bobcats protected home court throughout the season, finishing with a 9-3 record at the Fernandez Family Center, including two thrilling five-set victories against Southeastern University and Kaiser. STU ended the regular season winning six consecutive games, including five Sun Conference games to advance to the Sun Conference Tournament. And also here now, after we just finished for the volleyball, just to continue to add on to that, the Players Award, Dime Applaw, the Offensive Award, Ty Ranchenot, the Defensive Award, Anya Vavan, and the Coaches Award, Tatum Chagall Ridgeway. Now as for the women's soccer, to introduce the the MVPs of the teams, but here now, let me take you through now. St. Thomas finished the 2019 season with 10 victories on the pitch and a berth into the Sun Conference Tournament semifinals. On the season, the Bobcats outscored opponents 48 to 27 and was led by senior captain Sandy Benito with eight goals. Super sophomore Katharina Julich led the team in points with 20 and was one of four Bobcats to earn Sun Conference recognition. Also receiving conference honors for STU was Andrea Mansour with second team, Lonnie Vida with second team, and Winnie Clark joined Julich as an honorable mention. The Bobcats nearly upset two top ranked Sun Conference foes, number four Southeastern, and the game went into double overtime but losing two to one, and number one Kaiser losing three to two in one week. For the MVP of the women's soccer team, it is going to be Lonnie Vida for the best, off for the best offensive player, Katharina Julich. For the best defensive player, Emma Lysel. And also for the rookies of the year, Kayla Jackson and Leslie DeLeon. And finally, but not least, the most improved player, Isabella Santiago. Congratulations to you guys. You guys deserve that you had yourself one great of a season. Keep up the great work and do even better things next year. Now we're going to give you a quick recap of the cross country team. The cross country team continues its dominance in the conference as the Bobcats were represented at the NAIA National Championship once again. In 2019, Tommy Cardenas, Susie Gutierrez, and Andrea Peterson were all recognized as first team Sun Conference runners. With Cardenas claiming the Sun Conference Freshman of the Year award, the trio also advanced to Vancouver, Washington to represent STU in the National Championship. Joe Nathan Stallings and reigning Golden Bobcat winner Jose Penoliver earned second team recognition. Now here to give you the best players for this cost country team that just showed so much greatness this year for them. Now, from the most valuable woman's runner, Susanna Gutierrez, she just couldn't stop running out there. She was lights out. She was like Lightning McQueen. Nobody could have stopped her. She was on fire. Every time she would run, you would just see the fire coming out of her shoes. Next up here is the Bobcat Leadership Award. Caleb Ortega. Ortega had herself, you know, she, she just showed so much great leadership skills out there and so many people looked up to her. They, the, the stuff that she's going to leave behind and for the people that are behind her to watch what she did, she just shows great leadership skills and it, it was just very great to have her here at the university and she has herself a great future as well. Now for the most valuable men's runner, Tommy Cardenas. What I said about Susanna Gutierrez, the same applies to him. That man was lights out. He was small. Yeah, if you were behind him, he just kept on going. You don't got a chance. But also for the Bobcat Leadership Award, Joseph Alejandro Garcia and Mike Leon. Also, all those were great leaders for the Bobcats. They were so amazing. And 
the way how they exemplify themselves on the field was absolutely elusive. And it's so great to have them part of the Bobcat family. And now we're going to give you a quick recap of the men's soccer team, which also made history this year. Thank you. The Bobcats began the 2019 season with the best start in program history, opening the year with a 6-0 record featuring wins against 2018 Division II national champion Barry University, Nova Southeastern, and number 9 Georgia Gwinnett College. St. Thomas maintained an undefeated home record, defending home turf to the tune of a 4-0-2 record. STU reached the highest ranking in program history and advanced to the NAIA opening round for the fourth time, Missouri hosting the Marshall Bracket at Missouri Valley College. Six football players were named to some conference teams with Captain Harry Molnix leading the way. Molnix received first team honors for the third time in his career. Joining the captain was Pablo Gill's second team, Mike Mark's second team, while Joaquin Domber, Juan Manuel Collazo, and Romario Atkinson earned honorable mentions. As for men's soccer, the coach's award, Marcus Imaliani. Congratulations, man. You, you know, the coach, coach Phil, uh, Felix Max, he, he just really liked you a lot, man, Matt. He really appreciated you, what you did for this team, and he always going out there. A lot of players looked up to you, man. You're a great leader out there. Next year is the Leadership Award for Pablo Gill. Pablo, it was really nice to have you this year. You battled through a lot of adversity. You, know, you had yourself a few injuries. Unfortunately, you ended the year also with an injury, but you were able to battle right through it, showing lots of health, lots of heart, and you were able to show so much resilience out there. Next up now is the Defensive Player of the Year, Max Frank. Max was an absolute brick wall out there. You just couldn't get by him. You couldn't avoid the slide tackles. He was so great at avoiding penalties, and it was just so hard to get by him and try to get some goals on our great goalkeepers that we have out there. For the Offensive Player of the Year, Pedro Moriera. I remember when uh, Gus Gare, the play-by-play -play announcer, interviewed him not too long ago in 2019. He had himself a few hat-tricks actually this year. He just couldn't stop being wet like water out there. And finally, but not least, MVP, Harry Molinix. Harry Molinix, it's, we're, we're really going to miss you here, man. It was great to have you here at St. Thomas University. You got yourself a great career ahead of you. Not only were you great on the field, but you were great off the field. And it was really good to know you as a person. And now, coming up now is going to be for the football team, soccer. Bobcat it's going to be one was champion. made official in 2019 with the inaugural season kicking off on September 7th against Thomas More University. In a truly memorable moment, Robert Arms scored the first touchdown for Bobcat football, getting into the end zone on a 12-yard run in the third quarter. The following week, St. Thomas earned the first win in program history, defeating Union College 45-20, as Arms earned Mid-South Offensive Player of the Week honors, gaining 192 rushing yards on 26 carries for a score. The first-year program hit their stride in the second half of the season, going 3-2 over the final five games, starting with a 36-23 win over Allen University in South Carolina. STU earned the first Mid-South and overtime win in program history in a thrilling shootout against Warner University. John Israel Cooper became the second Bobcat to earn Mid-South Conference Player of the Week honors, hauling in a season-high three touchdowns. In the inaugural season finale, STU won the first home game in program history, defeating Faulkner 24-14. St. Thomas scored 21 points in the second quarter and sealed the win with a field goal, closing Bobcat 1 with a 4-6 record. Five Bobcats earned all Mid-South honors, including the Sun Division Offensive Freshman of the Year, John Israel Cooper. Jason Contreras, Michael Torrance, Donnell Bennett III became the first Bobcat football players in program history to be named to the Mid-South first team. Israel Cooper, in addition to the Freshman of the Year recognition, earned second team honors alongside Khalil Bryant. As for the football team, the defensive player of the year goes to Michael Torrance. Michael Torrance had himself a very nice year. And a matter of fact, this is the first, the, first, the first time in the whole entire program history that football actually had a team here at St. Thomas University. And Michael Torrance set the standard for the defensive sign. He could be very nice, you know, coming up for the next years to come. It's, it's, he's going to have a, real, a very nice future. And also offensive player of the year, John Israel Cooper. He, he made himself 
quite the name here at the university. I remember when uh, we were doing those Bobcats weekly at the beginning of the year, we just couldn't stop saying his name because of all those touchdowns he was getting. He was making a name for himself, and he's also going to have a bright future on the football aspect, and he's also a very good kid outside of the field. We're now going to take it here to a quick recap of the women's basketball team. STU welcomed several new faces to the program and began the season with two dominant wins against Johnson University. On December 4th, the Bobcats made history, dominating Trinity College and winning 106-26 from the Fernandez Family Center as five players scored in double digits. STU women's basketball thanks two seniors, Kiana Brooks and Destiny Wilson, for their careers which featured two NAIA national appearances. Now here for the women's basketball team, the Academic Excellence Award goes to Angie Alfaro. Angie Alfaro had herself quite a nice year, and not only that, every time I would always come by this gym here at St. Thomas University in the Family Fernandez Center, she was just always putting up free throws. One of the best free throw shooters I've actually seen on this team. She showed so much hard work, dedication. She put her blood, sweat, and tears into this game. Next up now is the Hustle Award and Patricia martinez Sands. To me, in my opinion, this was the most talented player on the team. Yes, yeah, she wasn't the type of a player to go out there and just get buckets like of nothing, but whenever she was on the court, she made a difference. She knew how to get everybody involved. She was very nice on defense as well. And not only that, she came back from an injury, and she looked like if she was at 100%. She knew how to get everybody involved. And if I was to compare to somebody in the NBA, it would have to be Lonzo Ball. Now, next up here is Defensive Player of the Year Award, Destiny Wilson. Destiny Wilson was a dog out there. Man, she was such an intimidator. It was so hard to just get by her. Every time somebody was with Destiny Wilson, they just continue had to pass out every single time. And next up here is the senior, Keanu Brooks. Keanu Brooks, not only was she part of the great women's basketball team here, she was also part here as well with Bobcat Sports Network. We're going to miss her. She's a great person. She was a go get bucket. That's what she was. Every time she was out there, the floater alerts and all that. And not only that, this woman's basketball team had the Mamma Mia moment of the year with a splishy splash, take a bath. And now next coming up is going to be a quick recap of the men's basketball team. In year one of the DP Harris era, the Bobcats men's basketball team had a complete turnaround with an 11 win improvement doubling their total from the 2018-19 season. SDU tied their longest winning streak in a decade by winning eight consecutive games from November 27th to January 4th. During the streak, the Bobcats completed a thrilling 24-point comeback against Huntington in which Justin Brown tied his season high with 35 points. On the season, St. Thomas completed four upset victories in Sun Conference play against number 21 Warner, number 11 Ave Maria, number 20 Southeastern, and number 17 Kaiser. STU ended the regular season on a five-game winning streak led by Ahmad Gilbert. During the streak, Gilbert averaged over 19 points per game and closed the season by earning Sun Conference Player of the Week honors. Brown, Gilbert, and Jocem Floyd all were named to Sun Conference teams as Brown and Gilbert were both named to the first team while Floyd earned second team honors. Entering the Sun Conference Tournament as a third seed, STU defeated Weber and knocked off number 21 Kaiser in the Sun Conference semifinals for the best. to advance to the Sun Conference Championship for the first time since 2012. Following the season, Floyd was selected to compete in the NABC NAIA Shoot and Slam competition, while Brown earned honorable mention honors as an All-American. Hope you all enjoyed that quick little recap that we all put together here of the men's basketball team. I had the privilege of announcing their games, and I'm really gonna I'm really gonna miss announcing their games. Those are great guys, man. Like I said, for all these athletes here, not only were they great on the court, but they were great off the court. The best attitude award goes to Antoine Joe. Antoine Joe has been here for four years, and he, every year he's been consistent. I remember that game with the Bobcats were down 24 points. He went out there and he was making these threes like crazy. And to be honest, when he was in the game, he was you know foul. He, he was almost 
getting into foul trouble. I was a little bit concerned when he was in the game, and he proved me wrong. He just kept on knocking down those fadeaway threes back to back. He couldn't be stopped, and he's gonna he, he's really gonna be missed here. He is such a great locker room presence. Next up now is the do it all Bobcat Award, Dejor Adderley. Dejor Adderley is like another another example. He's like the Patricia Sands of this team, like the Lonzo Ball of this team. He knows how to get everybody involved. He's not that much of a scorer, but he's very good on defense and knows how to find the shooters, knows how to get everybody involved. He's a big reason why sometimes JB will get hot, why Ahmad will get hot, why Floyd will catch all those slam jammas. Next up now here is the Academic Achievement Award, Lee Richmond. Lee Richmond, he's actually a brain off of the court as well. And not only that, he's very smart on the court. Yeah, he didn't do he wasn't that much part of the offense this year, but when he was on the court, sometimes he'd be lights off off the bench. He had three he had a game where he came off the bench and he had three three pointers in a row and he just couldn't be stopped and a Bobcat blowout victory. And also here, the Hardest Worker Award, Nick Strider. This man was built different, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, after games that the Bobcats would, would win by over 30 points, I'd go in the gym, and he's over here just curling, push-ups, pull-ups. He's doing sit-ups. He's doing all that for another two hours. He's built different, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes he's getting hot like if he's Rayan, and I don't even know what's going on. Next up now is the Mr. Bobcat Award, Justin Brown. JB, if you're watching this right now, I'm really going to miss calling your games, buddy. It was an absolute pleasure. All the slamma jammas alongside with Justin Floyd. You guys were absolutely lights out out there, man. And, you know, you got a great future. I know for a fact you're going to be going to be playing pro ball. You were just unstoppable. You were the best player that I got to see on a consistent basis in person. And we're really going to miss having you here, buddy. Now, next up here is the developmental basketball team. For the most improved player, we're going to give it to here to Mekhi Williams. For the Mr. Bobcat Champion of Character Award, Lexton Stubbs. And finally, but not least, the MVP, Andrew Dodds. And I saw your little highlight tape, man, on Modern Sports Media. Really good to see you. Good to work. And now here for the cheer and dance, the cheer champion of character, Isabella Alvarez. The dance champion of character, Angel, Angel Cregno. The cheer MVP, Leslie Diaz. And for the dance MVP, Chelsea Pierre. You guys would always be, every time I'd always see you guys just working out in the Family Fernandez Center here, always putting on some hard work. Yeah, your coach was hard on you guys, but it's because she loves you all. And you guys, all the hard work that all of you put out there, it all paid off at the end. You all had yourself a very good year, especially for a second year at St. Thomas University, having a cheer team. It was really good to see you guys. Also not here for golf, the Bobcat Award. A little quick recap, actually, before we get to that, of the golf team. Stay tuned. The STU men's golf team competed at four events this season and earned a second-place finish at the Weber International University Fall Classic. Four Bobcats placed in the top ten at the event, with Anthony Sabert Debater and Alec Caroga led the way, placing third and fifth, respectively. In the final event of the year at the Coastal Georgia Winter Invitational, STU placed fifth overall. Ryan Weigel placed highest for the Bobcats, tying for sixth with an even par finish. Now also now here for the golf team, the Bobcat Award for the lowest season scoring average, Alec Queroga. Now also coming up here is going to be a quick recap of the men's tennis team. The SCU men's tennis team earned their first win of the season against Scat Savannah, defeating the Bees 6-1. Three Bobcats swept their matchups in the win. St. Thomas earned their second win of the season against Weber International, sweeping the Warriors 7-0. St. Thomas University women's tennis also picked up two wins on the season, with both wins coming in the final two matches of the season. The Bobcats defeated Weber 6-1 and Warner 7-0. Now for the men's tennis team, the rookie of the year, Eduardo Reina. Congratulations, man. For the coaches award, Gonzalo Smolski. And also here for the MVP, Adreo Azusi. And this man team, you know, at the beginning of the year, it was a little bit slow for the team. They were coming off, you know, off of, the, uh, off of a streak of losses. But at the end of the year, you know, they really started to pick things up, getting some wins under their belt, and it's the, just the right way to really end their season. You always want to get some wins off, especially heading into the next season that they're going to have. Unfortunately for them, due to the uh, virus that's going on right now, 
their winning streak kind of um, got lost in the sand. Now coming up here is for the women's tennis, rookie of the year, Annie Carrera. Also now for the coaches of world, Manami Maema, and the MVP, Laya Pena. Now here, we're gonna give you a quick recap of the track and field team. Bobcat track and field opened the season in dominant fashion as Susie Gutierrez once again clinched a bid to the NAIA championship meet, winning her group and placing sixth overall in the marathon at the Naples Marathon event. St. Thomas competed in the Nova Southeastern Shark Six Way with several top finishes in a variety of events. Isaac Joseph claimed victory in the 100 meter race. Vanderson Jean and Rajnal Joseph earned a third and fifth place finish in the 400 meter. Tommy Cardenas won the 800 meter. Jonathan Memnon, Joseph Montez, Cardenas, and Joseph won the 4x400 meter. Valerie Louisant won the triple jump. On the women's side, Zona D'Souza placed fourth in the 400 meter. Naomi Marcin, Sofia Naya, Calliope Ortega, Mariana Morante placed fifth in the women's 4x400. Koya Hodge won second place in the shot put, and Melissa Zaldo won the discus event. For the track and field team, the Bobcat Awards, Rodhinal Joseph, Julian Bida, Jonathan Menmon, Pamela Sanders Booker, Trinity Dunbar, Sonia Excel, and Sophia Naya. Also now here for the women's MVP, Andrea Peterson. And finally, but not least, for the men's MVP, Isaac Joseph. Isaac Joseph, not only does he play here for the track and field team, he's also track part. STU softball won seven of 10 games from February 21st to March 3rd, including three run rule victories. St. Thomas was led this season by their performance in the circle as Erica Winter, Larissa Smiths, Ashley Rosado, Kaitlyn Spaulding, and Abigail Smith combined to pitch 147 innings. Winter, the St. Thomas ace, pitched 7 complete games and won 4 games while holding a 2.08 ERA. Offensively, Taina Colon continued to improve at the plate, batting 340 on the season and led the Bobcats in home runs and runs batted in. The Bobcats ended the season with a doubleheader sweep over Trinity Baptist. For the love of the game, for the softball team, is going to be Eliza Artillas. Congratulations, Artillas. You know, having you this year coming on over from Miami Dade College where you were hitting above 300, you know, that, uh, that's a lot of pressure coming on over to here. And you put the pressure to the side. You put it like right in the pocket and at second base shortstop there where you were not a softball could get by you you were like have your bias out there the way how you were flashing the leather you just couldn't be stopped out there next up here is going to be the most improved player Devin McDade you know I've known uh, Devin McDade these past two years I remember last year when she got her when she had her hamstring torn in practice and a stretch at first base it was very concerning she needed surgery she had a very hard time walking but she came back this year she was hitting the ball so well she was playing very good on defense. She didn't look stiff. She looked like she never even really got injured. And not only that, she's also a great student as well. Also now for the, mess, the most dedicated player, Erica Winter. Not only was she the most dedicated, she is, was also the ace of this team at the beginning of the year. Kind of had a hard time getting that put away pitch, but she really developed it as the season just continued to go on. She was putting away hitters with that nice change of that disgusting breaking pitch and she just kept on going out there rolling and polling next up here is going to be the rookie of the year abigail smith not only is abigail smith part of the softball team she was also an intern here for the bobcat sports network it's very good to know her not only on the field but off the field she's a great person and you know as a rookie you're going to have you know some, some butterflies in your stomach when you're going to go out there onto the field court wherever you are, and she handled it perfectly. She was a very good pitcher, had nice velocity, and we can't see, we, can, we can't wait to see what she has in the future to come. Now we're gonna give you here a quick recap of the baseball team. St. Thomas entered the 2020 season ranked number two in the NEIA for the second time in program history. Following the third NEIA World Series trip in five seasons for Bobcats baseball, 
SCU opened the season with a 6-1 record, which featured a series sweep against number 22 Middle Georgia State. In Game 2 of the series, Ernesto Pino threw the first no-hitter in over a decade, striking out 12 nights in 7 innings. SCU opened Sun Conference play the following week, taking the series over Kaiser. The Bobcats added a series sweep over Warner and Sun Conference play, accumulating a conference record of 5-0-1. In one of the final games of the season, the Bobcats rallied to stun Montreal College, earning a walk-off victory as Alejandro Rivero lined a single to right field. Overall, the Bobcats ended the 2020 season 19-5-1 and 5-0-1 and in Sun Conference play and ranked 4th in the NAIA. Now here for the baseball team. I used to be part of the team, but unfortunately I had to put it away due to injury. But being part of that Dalga, seeing all these guys go out there, seeing how they improved from foul ball all the way to spring was just great. They had so much pressure coming off of an amazing year that they had last year, going all the way to Idaho and being just losing in the championship game, being ranked second in the nation. And Luis Gonzalez, you know, coming all, all over from pace, he had a lot of pressure to come here. And when he would go out there, he was the guy that you wanted to come out of the bullpen alongside with Jason Grania. And he was just lights out. He was just shoving against hitters, and he was just putting them away. Now here is the most improved player, Gus Scare. Gus, man, I know you're watching this right now. Um, before I even get into the great player that you were on the field, we're really going to miss having you here. And it, it was just so great also having you here with Bobcat Sports Network. He's also the play-by-play -play announcer for the men's soccer and women's team. It, it, it was just a privilege to know you, man. You taught me so much here about Bobcat Sports Network. And on the field, man, you improved so much. You were a great player last year, but what you turned into this year, man, was an absolute dog. Those nice web gems that you were making in left field, you getting your first home run of your college career in front of your family was just a beautiful thing. And it kind of almost brought a tear to my eye, man. Next up here is Cy Young Ernesto Pino. Ernesto Pino, before I even get in to how you did in your overall season, I just want to point out one thing. You came back from an injury that put you out from the whole entire year last year, and you came in like a dog at 100%. You just couldn't be stopped. You throw yourself a no-hitter in seven games, and it was just a thing of beauty being able to go out there with you guys to celebrate, see how happy you were. It, it, it really did put a smile on my face. And finally, but not least, Joey Thompson. They named him Joey Two Scoops on Twitter, on the SCU Baseball Twitter account by John Leatherman. You know, Joey, you are... Just so many words to describe you. Not only are you great, you're funny, you're an awesome person off the field. You know, every time you go up to the plate, you were always the guy to trust, always putting the ball in contact, like knowing when to swing, having very good discipline out there. You're a very good defender. You got the speed. You got all the tools. And the scary thing about it is that you're only a sophomore on the field. Who knows where you're going to be these next two years? And just to give a little trailer, you're going to be an absolute beast, man. Now here for the developmental baseball team. Rookie of the Year, Adiel Cantina. For the most improved player, Kafili Thomas, who, matter of fact, actually got called up to the varsity team this year. That man has some jets. Next year is the Pitcher of the Year, Derek Powells. And finally, but not least, MVP, Emmanuel Montesino. As we're now here, going to give you a quick recap of the eSports team. Esports continues to grow and the success would not be possible without the efforts of Kelly Rivera. Since her arrival, Rivera has literally built the program with her own hands and organizes events for the team. And thanks to Sean Wilkins, the program continues its development. The Bobcats compete in NACE in a variety of games such as League of Legends, Overwatch, and Apex. Now, we, before we get into the training room junkie, we just want to announce the developmental soccer team. Now, for the champion of character award, Eric Ordonez. For the coaches award, Gabriel Henia Rivera. For the defensive player of the year, Fernando Morandi. Next up here for the offensive player of the year is Diego Vega. And finally, but not least, for the MVP, Matthews Pierce. Now, coming up now is going to be a little... Quick recap now of the training room junkies. And now also for the eSports Awards, before we even get into the training room junkies, coordinator of the year, Sean Wilkins. And finally but not least, the, the most valuable gamer, the MVG, Kelly Rivera. Now for the training room junkies, Kylie Vogel coming from women's basketball. And then Kayon 
Phillips from football. Now also coming up here for the Athletic Communications Award announced now. Just a little quick thank you to all the people that are part of the athletic department here. Now coming up is the total awards. Haley Smith from softball. Kylie Beecham. Taylor Turner. Hannah Simmons from volleyball. Joshua Martinez from baseball. Eduardo Reina from men's tennis. Matthew Pierce from the developmental team soccer. And then finally, but not least, Joseph Torres from the developmental team for baseball. Also now here for the Silver Bobcats, just, just to, before I even get into the Silver Bobcats, these two individuals, they're great human beings. I've, I, I'm currently right now my sophomore here at St. Thomas University. When I first came here, not only did I meet uh, Josh Leatherman, another person here, part of the broadcast, I also got introduced to these two wonderful people, and it was an absolute privilege to know them. And just to give you a quick little recap of what the Silver Bobcat Award, it's the award that goes out to the male and female student athletes that best exemplify the mission of St. Thomas University of being leaders for life. These two student athletes led the mission by leading the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, served as leaders in the SDU community, and participated in the Rise to Win initiative. The 2020 Silver Bobcat Award winners are Maria Vega from Women's Soccer and Nicholas Izquierdo from Baseball. Congratulations to you too, Maria. You know, unfortunately, you know, this year you couldn't play for soccer because of an injury in the year before as well, but I can't wait to see what you're going to do next year. Not only are you great on the field, but you're great off the field. You're such an amazing philanthropist for St. Thomas University. You exemplify so much leadership, and it, this school is just absolutely blessed to have you here. And as for Nicholas, he's scheduled the man. I'm really going to miss you. You're the funniest guy I've ever met. You have shown me so much. You don't understand, man. When this season got canceled, I teared up thinking about the fact that you, Gus, and all these other seniors are going to go. I know you're watching this right now, man. I'm really going to miss you, bro. And by the way, just keep on eating those donuts. I'm going to make sure I get you a dozen of those, those blueberry ones, all right? Now coming up for the Golden Bobcat Awards. The Golden Bobcat Award recognizes the top male slash female student athlete on the field or court. These individuals both received honorable All-American honors and led their teams to the Sun Conference playoffs while earning several Sun Conference Player of the Week awards between them. The 2019-2020 Golden Bobcat winners are Justin Brown from men's soccer and Ty Ranch Chenault from volleyball. My, my mistake, Justin Brown from men's basketball. Now, before I even get into these two, I don't want to just end it there. Ty Ranch Chenault, she was an absolute beast out there. In my opinion, she's probably the best athlete at St. Thomas University. She's got absolute bunnies. I've never really seen her try to go up there and dunk, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if she'd just go up there and just throw an absolute windmill. She's got bunnies, and every time she would go up there, you could just see the other team just crouching down because they were scared that she was just going to absolutely deflate the ball and then just ruin it all over them. And then now here for Justin Brown, I already talked about how much I'm going to miss this guy. Not only do I know him on the court, but I know him off the court. You know, he, he's a great player. Not only could he just get buckets out there score, not only could he just yam it on people's head, he could also do just passing, defense. He, whenever it's the biggest game, you know you could always count on him. There's never a question that he's just not going to show up. There's never a doubt. He's always going to be there. He's just like a closer, for example, in baseball. You know the closer that you want. He's going to go out there, just shut down the opponent, and that right there was Justin Brown. And we're really going to miss having him. Ty Ranchanat, and one more time, for the Silver Bobcat Awards, Maria Vega from women's soccer, Nicholas Izquierdo from baseball, and for men's basketball for the Golden Bobcat Awards is Justin Brown, and for volleyball, Ty Renshana. Thank you, seniors. We're going to miss you so much. We really are. And, you know, it, it was just an absolute privilege to have you all here, and we're really going to miss having to announce your names, your names on the Bobcats Awards, where we, where we are. Once again, my name is Giovanni Rosello from the Bobcat Sports Network, and thank you so much for tuning in on the 2019-2020 Bobcat Awards. And one more thing, wash your nasty hands. It's not that hard, man. It's not. <laughs>